everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, this is the new uh, Premiere Pro 2022 playlist that I've been been started that I've been getting into here. And uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to uh, go through your preferences. Like I've mentioned before, these are kind of comprehensive tutorials. So if you don't like it, I'm going to go back and start uh, recording these in Windows 7 again, just so I uh, trigger a bunch of you to start adding comments saying, why are you using Windows 7? Why, why, why? Anyway, let's get started. So in, on a Macintosh, you're going to go up to Premiere Pro, and you're going to pull down uh, Preferences here. And you can just hit, you can just go and hit one of these here, and it'll bring up the full Preference panel right here. So for Windows, you go to the Edit pull down, and then click on Preferences, and then click on one of the uh, items in here will bring open your Preference panel. So it's just uh, located in a slightly different spot because Macintosh is. Because Mac, Macs always have this, uh, the name of the software here, and the preferences are usually located there. And on a PC, they're usually under Edit, and they don't have this little Premiere Pro tab or the software tab that is uh, sitting up here. Now, I'm just going to go through and show you the, the preferences that I like. I mean, there's a ton of preferences under here, and some of these you just have to experiment with. But I'm going to go under and show you some of the settings that I like uh, to have set up under the preferences here. Under the general tab, they have some things that I think that used to be necessary. I kind of they they used to have it uh, different here. When you double click on a on a on a bin, it opened it up in a free floating window uh, right here. That was that was the default setting, and they've changed that since. So I used to go under and do some a couple little changes in here. They've kind of set this up to where it's way more intuitive, and you don't and and the preferences they have the way they've set these preferences here, I think, are the way most people like them. That's why they 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 updated this to fit those preferences. So the general tab, I don't even touch anymore. Appearance is kind of nice because you can go under if depending on Premiere Pro used to be really uh, a lot lighter where it kind of looked like uh, this actually it was almost like white uh, before the kind of this white whitish whitish and grayish theme uh, but now the default is darker which makes a lot more sense when you're editing you want to be able to see the picture so once again they fixed some of these things where uh, you don't necessarily have to do a lot of changes here. They have these highlight colors for text and for the focus indicators, whatever window is selected, which we're going to show you here. Uh, that means like whatever window you're in and when you're uh, selecting items, it is this outline right here. So whatever window you're operating in, it's going to be how dark or light that color is there. So that's under appearance here. You can see that's getting darker and wider there if you really want to emphasize it. Some people like to put it on, get, get a much heavier, heavier emphasis on that so you can really tell which windows you're operating in. Next one is audio. A couple things I like in here is, first of all, I have these two checkmarked, and they're checkmarked automatically, but uh, sometimes if these get unchecked somehow and you can't hear your audio while scrubbing, what that means is basically you're hearing your audio as you're fast-forwarding or rewinding, and also maintain pitch while shuttling. Uh, so that, that basically means it doesn't sound like it's getting faster. Uh, here's one of my older tutorials, but I just wanted to demonstrate this because I've got some talking audio here. But as we, uh, I'm going to hit J, K, L, J to rewind, K to stop, L to, uh, to forward, and then I'm going to hit it L, L, L a couple times so it fast forwards, and J, J, J a bunch of times so it rewinds, and you'll hear this, uh, here, here's 100%. I just hit L. Like, uh, if you're doing like a montage, you may, now I'm going to hit L twice. You mentioned it's a montage, so I would, um, and this is technically kind of. Notice it, it's, it's scrubbing through the audio. You hear you hear the audio playing back as it's scrubbing. That's the same as if you grab the playhead and do this. And you can see what that's doing. It's playing back the audio while it's scrubbing, which is for me is very important. So I always leave that check mark. But then if you go under, this is just a preference thing. If you go under preference, this is a personal preference thing, but some people like to uncheck maintain pitch while shuttling because that kept the same vo vocal pitch uh, even though it was fast forwarding. Now if you do this and you hit OK, and let's hit LL a couple times so it goes fast forward. And then you hear that it's talking really, it, it sounds like it's sped up like a chipmunk. So some people prefer that. I prefer it to maintain the pitch so you can really tell the what, which words are being said. So I usually just leave that check mark. But some people prefer to have that on the on the fast forward chipmunk speed. So audio hardware. If you have a different audio device, uh, Premiere Pro has gotten really smart in, pre in, in recent in the last few years where they finally added this system default. If you keep it on system default, wherever you go to your system default inside of Windows or, or on a Mac, if you go up to your audio devices here, uh, if you have a hardware audio device that sends it out to 5.1 uh, surround sound speakers or even just stereo, so a nice uh, stereo speaker system, you can go up and change the hardware and then this will automatically follow your system default. Whatever you choose up here, Premiere Pro, Pro automatically changes. You used to have to go into here and change it. When you changed your system 
default, you would have to go into here and tell, tell it what audio hardware device uh, to go to. But you can do the same thing, if even if this is on your speakers, so you have your regular audio pumping through your speakers, but the, your regular audio from like uh, your browser and other, uh, and other devices. But if you want to listen to your edit in a headphone, you, headphones, you can go and change this to your headphones. And that way you can have two audio systems going at once. Auto save. I'm going to go on. A, I'm going to have a different episode on this. A couple episodes uh, past this one here, but uh, you can go in and set your preferences on this. And like I said, I'm going to have a separate episode on that. Uh, capture is kind of uh, obsolete because uh, in, unless you're using, uh, if you're using tape to capture. So if you have some old devices that you're trying to capture, I probably ought to do an episode on that because a lot of people will have tapes from old cameras and stuff like that that they need to capture and incorporate into new projects. So at some point, I'll probably do a new a new episode on that. Collaboration uh, deals with team projects. Uh, I'm going to deal with that in a future episode. Not going to do that right now. Control surface. If, if you have a special keyboard or a control surface that you're playing back with, using to play back with Premiere, uh, this is where you add your device. Device control deals with capturing tape, and it deals with two different uh, and it deals with two different types of digital formats, DV and HDV. If you have an analog source like a VHS deck, you do have you still have to have a digital deck that will in that will convert it to a digital signal. And there are some devices on the market that do that you can purchase a VHS deck that actually has a firewire uh, output. Next is the media tab. The one thing I like to change in here is default media scaling here. This I'm going to have in another episode coming up here soon, but the scale to frame size and set to frame size are two different items here. When I when you bring footage in, if you have something that let's, let's say is a 1920 by 1080, which is HD, and then you bring in some 4K footage and say that that footage is too large for your timeline, for the timeline that you're working in, I like when you import it, it, it puts a little check mark on scale to frame size. That way it brings your footage down to, the, to meet the size or, or scales up the footage to the, meet the size of your timeline settings. So any media that you import, it will automatically scale it to fit the timeline that you're working within. And like I said, I'll have that in a future episode. Skipping down to media cache. Whenever you import media into Premiere Pro, it does things like uh, creates audio waveforms, as you see down here, and and it builds that information onto a cache file. That cache file, that cache file tells Premiere Pro uh, how to build those audio waveforms. So if you move from one computer to the next, you don't have to rebuild those things. Now this is something I kind of wish they'd change because uh, right now it's got the media cache files. They're being saved in a folder on your actual computer. If you have an external drive and you move from one computer to the next, oftentimes you want to bring those files with you so it doesn't have to rebuild those. And if you have a really big project, it can sometimes take up to 10-15 minutes to rebuild all those audio files if you've got a, if you've got a very large amount of uh, media. So what I like to do, and this is not necessary unless you're going to be switching computers, but I like to hit browse and save those, those cache files onto my current hard drive that I'm working on. So if I have this hard drive here, I hit this, click on that, I click the hard drive that I'm working on and I can save, the, save it here. And you can even save it in a specific folder so it's specific to a project, but then you have to be very conscious of that whenever you start a new project. And I also put the media database onto the same location as well onto that hard drive. That is if I'm switching from computer to computer. If I'm not, then I just leave that the same. Playback. This is nice here as well. If you're working on a dual monitor system, which I am right now, you can check mark and tell it to go full screen, tell your video to go full screen to your secondary monitor. So if I'm just working on this single monitor here, I can click preferences, playback, and I can check mark my secondary monitor, which is my monitor to my left, and I can hit OK. And then if you also have and if you have hardware that sends it out to a dedicated to a dedicated monitor, you can do that as well through something like Blackmagic Playback if you have the hardware. So now I'm recording this with my phone. You can see that I'm going to check mark this monitor, hit OK, and now it has moved my playback over to this over to my Macintosh here. I play this back. It is playing that video full back from my timeline on the screen over here. Sync settings. If you have a special like a, a layouts or preferences that you have set up inside of Premiere Pro, I usually have these check marked. If you add new short keyboard shortcuts or customized uh, keyboard shortcuts, which we'll have another episode on, it's going to take those settings over to if you, if you open up Premiere Pro on a new system. So if you have the Creative Cloud downloaded onto three or four computers, uh, if you have those synced whenever you do changes on keyboard shortcuts, workspace layouts, uh, preferences, whatever, uh, when you move to that computer, it's going to ask you if you want those preferences moved over. I, I like that on Ask My Preference. Uh, when you open up a, a, the software on a new machine, it will ask you that. 
and it will have it synced in the cloud. Under timeline, it has a transition duration for uh, your default video transition and audio transitions here. I usually like those. If you're doing like a video that where you want them, if you're doing like a music video and you want the video transition to be uh, maybe 60 frames, which is maybe two, two seconds, depending on what your frame rate is, uh, rather than one second long when you're adding uh, a whole bunch of dissolves and you're going from shot to shot to shot and you just want them all to be like two seconds, you can come in here and, and set those up. The one thing that drives me nuts in here that I really, really hate is playback and return to beginning when restarting playback. Sometimes I just, I want it, I don't want it to hit the end and then start playing again. I want it to stop, fade to black, and then just stop, and that's it. So I usually uncheck this, and now I hit OK. Because watch this, actually, let's leave this check marked and hit OK as you get to the end here. As it gets to the end here, and if you hit your space bar again, it hops to the beginning, and it goes to, and starts playing through the beginning of the movie there. So I I, I do not like that, because sometimes if I'm editing or editing at the end, and I unintentionally hit the space bar to play back, and it's at the end, it gets to the beginning, then I have to go find the ending of my timeline again. little nitpicky thing, but that's the way I like it. And this is another thing that drives me nuts right here, so let's uncheck that one, is play after rendering previews. Because sometimes if you have like some uh, some red portions in your timeline that you need to play back that needs to render, uh, so it renders it to green, you, you do that by hitting the return key. And when it renders those things, it hops to the beginning and starts playing from the beginning, which does not make a lick of sense to me. So I will uncheck play after rendering previews. So when you render, it will just stay right there and won't go to the beginning and start playing. Because sometimes I go away from my computer and let it, sit, and let it render. And then when I come back, my computer's been playing for like five minutes and I can't stand that. So anyway. And those are kind of the, the, the setup items that I like to go through on preferences whenever I start on a new machine. If my settings haven't been synced, those are the things I like to go in and change uh, to get set up for editing. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know.